Good morning. Welcome to the channel. I'm Simon. This is another new episode, another new series. Love stories. This love story, the main character, Gary, is 40 years old. He's Texas, Texan, from Texas. Is it a Texan? I suppose so. He's actually visiting me in about two months' time, coming to see us. And I held off on this story because uh, I wanted to catch up and get the final updates or continuing updates. But I spoke to him recently, so he said, go on, tell my story. Gary is 40, born in Texas into an oil family. At the age of 25, his family, mother and father, both passed away in a helicopter crash. Um, don't know whereabouts they were, but after going to school, he fell into the family business. He now is the uh, owner of the family business, no brothers or sisters, and I believe it's oil fields. To give you an idea, he is what I would call a billionaire. One of the times I spoke to him, he told me he earned in excess of $50,000 a day after tax, clear salary. He's probably the richest person I've ever known in my life, ever met in my life, and one day he wants a family at the start of this story. He needs somebody to take on the family business. Now at 40 years old, he is starting to think this way. I met him actually before I started the first bar job in Pattaya. And then quite a few times after when I was in the bars. And I've met him many times over the years, kept in contact. So I've seen his story going on now for hmm, 16, 17, 18 years. He's very, very, how can I put it? Careful with his money, as in he won't spend his money except on certain items or things the best way without me saying Gary you're tight <laughs> to him <laughs> which I have said sometimes <laughs> 40 years old uh, at the age of about 17 he followed his father around the world whatever they do with oil whether they're selling it or business around the world to do with the oil fields and money and prices and investments and all of that always traveled first class everywhere always had loads of cars in the garage um, was brought up into five-star living after his family the demise of his family the business just carried on as normal apparently because the father had set up highly paid staff to run the business highly paid accountants, lawyers, everything ran like clockwork and Gary didn't have to do anything apart from sign some bits of paper every now and then. From what he's told me it ran itself and money just dropped into his bank accounts every single day. Um, for somebody like me who can't ever imagine what it's like to get £50,000 or $50,000 a day dropping in your bank account oh, it's ridiculous amounts of money obscene Gary Physique 300 pounds in weight 6 foot 4 big build guy big guy he liked to drink he liked to eat a lot and throughout his life right the way up till probably mid 30s he never had a girlfriend he never trusted a woman with his money he never trusted 
he never trusted anyone. He was quite a recluse in some ways, but then he would go out and rather than, he, he had women falling at his feet in Texas and he totally ignored all of them by all accounts. I can imagine super attractive women chasing him and he, he just rebuttled a lot of them. He just pushed them all away. He would rather get in a plane or a helicopter and travel 500 kilometers, a thousand kilometers to some bar and pay a lady for her services for a few hours. And he did this all the way from 17 years old right up till about 35. He would just, wasn't interested, didn't want a wife at that point, didn't want a girlfriend, wouldn't trust anybody. So he just, he'd fly up to Vegas, he'd fly to LA or wherever he'd go. Um, or he'd drive hundreds of kilometers to get away from his area just to hire girls for a few hours. He didn't, from what he said to me, he never parted heavily as in getting lots of girls. He was not into drugs. He was, he was dr like drinking, but not heavily. He never wanted to get drunk, never wanted to be out of control. Just with his food, I think. Huh. Always eating. Ten years after his father and mother had gone, at the age of 35, he discovered Thailand. And he started coming to Asia. But again, nobody knew him. He would fly first, uh, first class. He would have five-star hotels. He mainly, when he was in Thailand the first few years, just stayed around Bangkok. He wasn't a beach person. Um, the heat never bothered him, being from Texas, I suppose. Spices never bothered him. He could eat any food, Thai food. But he came in on business trips. He'd come in via Australia or on the way through, and he'd have a few days here and there. And he knew the system in Thailand for him to find part-time girlfriends for hours or for 24 hours. But he never kept girlfriends for more than 24 hours. He'd never see the same girls. But as he approached 40 years old, he started to think about the fact he wanted a family. At some point, he was gonna have to either adopt some children or have his own children. But having his own children scared him because that meant having a girlfriend or a wife and he was petrified of losing his money. So if he ever did get a girlfriend, there would be more prenuptial agreements than you could ever imagine, probably for every country in the world put together. But it still scared him. He couldn't commit to a woman, a relationship. After traveling around the world for so many years and all the countries he'd visited and all the part-time girlfriends that he had had, he said to me that Thailand was his favorite girl, lady, the way they look, the way they handle themselves. He quite liked the Thai girls but he'd never really been outside of entertainment zones he'd never seen the real Thailand so he was judging his everything on how the girls in the entertainment areas looked dressed behaved themselves and it was always for short periods of time with them so really he couldn't in my opinion get any idea what a Thai girl was like When I met him, and it would have been in the year 2000, maybe 1999, that was when he was 40. Currently he's 59, coming up for his 60th birthday, I believe, could be this year, or it could be the beginning of the next year. When I first met him, I just met him playing pool, he loved pool. 
and he's quite a good ball player as well. Um, but he, he, he'd found Pat here, that's where I met him. He always stayed at the Dusset Resort and that was the first time that I'd come single as a single guy and I was also staying at the Dusset and that's where we, well I met him in a pool, in a bar playing pool but then we both ended up staying at the same hotel so we had a few chats around the pool at the Dusset and uh, got on really well and kept in touch ever since. At that time, 40 years old, and he sort of told me back then bits of his story. I couldn't believe, it just couldn't sink into my head the amount of money the guy had. Um, he was generous around people, buying a few drinks, but not overly generous. So he wasn't flash with his money. He wasn't just throwing money about going into bars, ringing the bells. He just wasn't doing that. So that's what I quite liked about him. He wasn't, he wasn't flash. He was quite down to earth. He did dress, however, every piece of his clothing was tailor-made, handmade. Um, and on the one occasion I remember, it might have been when he was checking out, because he went before me a couple of days before I went that first trip but he had about 10 suitcases. He traveled with loads and loads of bags and cases, but he had so many clothes, but he was a large guy. Um, he didn't wear flash jewelry. He did, I did see it on his arm a few times, a really nice expensive watch, but he didn't tend to wear that out and about, but he would at the hotel and maybe I suppose a restaurant. So he wasn't flash with the jewellery, he did have nice sunglasses and his shoes you could tell they were a lot of them were Italian leather shoes either handmade or top quality. Walking a couple of times that I did go to the bars with him, the girls as I've done on that scoring video of mine if you haven't seen it, how Thai girls score you. I'll see if I can put it in at the end of the video, a link to it. They spotted him 200 meters from the bar by the shoes, by the tailored shorts, the tailored shirts. Uh, he had quite a lot of hair, quite bushy hair, but it was, he was manicured. He, he, he was, everything was, nails were manicured, he was clean, expensive cologne aftershave. Um, he was clean shaven, really lovely guy, really nice pleasant guy and at 40 years old bumped into me. <laughs> he told me how he enjoyed the girls in Bangkok and now Pattaya and how he thought he would potentially consider settling down with a Thai woman and having babies. He needed some heirs to the business. And at that time, I was uh, uneducated about Thailand myself. It was my first, Solomon's first visit really. I didn't know all the scenes and I had no idea. So I couldn't give him any advice or anything. Right back in those days. I was making mistakes and he was probably making mistakes but one thing he did do is when he saw a girl in a bar even if it was the beginning of the evening if he saw and he always went for the prettiest girls if he walked into a bar and on one occasion it must have been seven in the evening we went into a bar right at the beginning of the night and he spotted a stunning girl and he just buy her it would be like come here have a drink um, for the evening or for the night whether it was a few hours or all one all night how much did they want and back then they was it was maybe a thousand baht 1500 and he would just say to them I'll give you and it was 
but I seem to remember him saying triple. He had a funny saying, but he was basically saying, I'll give you three times your price if you're a good girl. And he was a good girl in a Texas accent. And the girls couldn't understand this, they, but they soon twigged. He meant three times the money if they were good. And of course, they're just gonna be like, oh, jackpot. This could be the golden goose. And he just bought the girls. And no girl on those few times I was out with him ever said no. He just bang. But then he'd leave. He'd go, all right, tell us, Simon, and be gone for the night. And he'd just go back to the hotel. That's the basis of this new story, Gary. I'm tempted, uh, as I'm recording this, I still haven't totally come up with the name of this love story. But Love Me Long Time really does fit with this one. So I'm tempted to call it Love Me Long Time. Hmm. There we go. Episode one, done. Love Me Long Time with Gary. Let's see where this one goes. <laughs> Bye for now, everyone, and I'll... There'll be a link in at the end in this blue bit. Be there. God, just as I get to the end of the video and I'm trying to say something, the last couple of minutes it just battery turns off. Anyway, in the blue screen here at the end, there'll be one uh, window there with the girls with the scoring system video. Have a look at that one. You'll understand about the clothes and the money. See you next time. Take care. Bye for now.